I don't like this, sir. I'm sorry, Otis. It's for your own good. I didn't do anything wrong, sir. Otis, you shipped yourself to China without telling anything to me or to anyone else. You shipped yourself to a Chinese pilot academy and after having met with your friends, just you just decided that friends. you wanted to have a look up close to the JL-10s and the J-10s, so you started wandering series. in the hangars. You end up messing up with the graduation ceremony, you have okay, been spotted, and you don't realize how difficult it was to convince the Chinese to send you back, you have no idea how difficult it was to actually write a script that selectively deleted all your memories from that you place with without memory, damaging sir. you, and convince the Chinese that it actually worked. If it didn't manage to do that, you could have been scrap metal by now. Oh. Sorry, Otis. It's for your own good. I'm sorry. It is dark in here. Oh, come on, you have infrared. <laughs> I also have the name and the number of the lady you meet at the supermarket. She is single. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs>this video is a follow-up of the previous video about Chinese training and doctrine. Why do we need to follow up? Well, because recently there has been quite a large change that has probably few equivalents in the West. China operates a large fleet of trainer aircraft and the most numerous of those is the JL-8 which is roughly an equivalent of the British Oak or the Italian MB339. After that the pilots transition on the JL-9 which is a supersonic trainer roughly equivalent to the T-38 Talon. But currently there is also an advanced trainer, the JL-10, that is being deployed as we speak. This one is roughly an equivalent of the Italian Mach 346 Master or the Russian Yak-130. China is currently focusing on improving pilots' training in several ways. We have described the details in the previous video and for those who didn't watch it, here is an extract. A Chinese person may join the PLAF because it has been recruited at school or because being enlisted he then applied for the position. In fact, the potential cadet is probably coming from a school where he or she was already noticed as a good prospect. However, in the last few years the Chinese are also accepting college and university students. In the same way the Chinese Air Force used to be a predominantly Han force, but now is also accepting people coming from Chinese minorities. Between 1000 and 1300 cadets are recruited every year and about 50% of them reaches the end of the training. The Chinese system is referred to as the four stage system and it is also called the four plus one plus one, referring to the number of years that are actually required to complete the syllabus. The training starts with four years of academic formation at the PLAF University in Changchun. During these years the cadet starts almost immediately flying with the simulators but the real flight has to wait the fourth year with piston engine trainers and is going to last for about 250 hours. After the university the cadet is transferred to one of the three colleges for one or two years. Combat pilots fly on the JL-8 trainer while bomber and transport pilots use different aircraft and obviously helicopter pilots fly on helicopters. The flight duration in this stage is from 150 to 200 hours. In the following phase lasting about one year the pilot receives flight training and tactical training on his or her final operational aircraft. It is in this stage that a pilot may be selected to become a rear seat 
weapons control officer, basically the equivalent of the weapon system officers in Western Air Forces. At the end of this phase, the cadet becomes a third grade pilot. In phase four, lasting six months, the pilot receives further tactical training and crucially joint operations training. At the end of this stage, the pilot is finally assigned to the first operational unit. So this general picture still holds, but in 2021, there have been some important upgrades to this syllabus. In August 2021, the first group of cadets trained only on JL-10 actually graduated from Shaduang Sh 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 Academy. This class skipped the JL-9 stage and part of the JL-8 training thanks to these peculiar JL-10 features. In fact, the JL-10 is designed to simulate the flight characteristics and the cockpit and let's say the general experience of a four-generation fighter. In this way, the pilots that are destined to the J-10 or one of the flanker variants or the J-20 are better prepared to transition to their final aircraft. The Chinese have reported a 30% improvement in the learning speed with no detrimental consequences. Uh, yes, you read correctly, this is not a mistake. During 2021, the Shazhuang Academy received an undetermined number of J-10s. Yes, J-10s. The J-10 is basically the cornerstone of the Chinese Air Force. It is a multi-role fighter, it is the most numerous type in service, and it has three variants. Apparently, the aircraft destined to the Academy are J-10As, the oldest variant. We have a series of videos about the aircraft, link above here if you're interested. So the purpose of the J-10 is to train the cadets on their final aircraft directly at Academy level. In this way, the whole process of training a cadet is reduced from six years to little more than four years. So the new cadets start flying early on basic trainer aircraft, then they skip the JL-8, go directly to the JL-10, where they get their jet experience. In their fourth year, the cadets start flying the J-10 and they learn to fly the aircraft in those tactical and joint operations that are fundamental to become a combat-ready pilot. In this way, as we have already pointed out, the entire syllabus has been reduced of almost two years without compromising the quality of the cadets graduating from the academy according to the Chinese. Not all the pilots follow this accelerated training uh, because the limiting factor is the availability of frontline combat fighters to be assigned to the academies. We have no news of any other combat aircraft assigned to the academies, so for now we have to think that flanker pilots and J-20 pilots are following the normal syllabus. changes in Chinese training stimulate at least a couple of considerations. The Chinese Air Force is focusing heavily on training, finally recognizing that it is a fundamental enabler of an Air Force effectiveness. And mind that this is a realization that if we consider what used to be the PLAF doctrine back in the 80s or even early 90s, it is no small achievement. In the early 2000s, the Chinese Air Force suffered some failures in joint training with other countries that have been basically attributed to training and doctrine. Those have been hard lessons, but it seems that the Chinese have actually learned quite well from those. The second consideration is that the Chinese seem to have a real hunger of pilots. And this is the reason why they are accelerating their formation. The most likely underlying reason is that they are planning a further expansion of the Air Force. And this would not be exactly news because they have been consistently acquiring about 100 combat aircraft every year, either replacing the older models or creating new units. 
However, it is possible that the Chinese are thinking to operate their aircraft with a blue-gold model. That is, having one aircraft for more than one pilot, so the aircraft can fly more missions than the pilots. In fact, in wartime, at least for a limited period, the aircraft can definitely fly more missions than a pilot. However, these are speculations and we don't know the exact answer. But we will keep following the development of the situation. In the meanwhile, we have quite a few videos about China on the channel and they're going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching and see you there.